The Moth Worlds were held in Cascade Locks, Oregon from August 10th to August 15th, 2009. The Port of Cascade Locks offered camping right on site to the competitors, which numbered 46 entries from 12 countries around the globe. The gorge is notoriously windy with super flat water in Cascade Locks. The venue could not have been more perfect. Now, rigging a moth is no picnic. The fleet is extremely friendly though. They're always ready to help each other out with advice. The boats are so light too, you have to tie them down to keep them from blowing away on land. With lots of moving parts that have to hold up in high impact situations, everything must be double and triple checked. And here is a moth toolbox. Key to a moth toolbox. A lot of lashing line, a big hammer, most important tool, and lots of spare epoxy and glue. There you are. So how does the boat go from low riding to flying? So the ride height's controlled by this wand, which is runs up, connects to the deck, and runs through a series of linkages through along the deck and into back up to the centerboard. And on top of the centerboard, there's another little linkage that runs down and controls this aileron on the bottom of the fin. And that's how it controls your ride height. Pretty cool. While I was sailing moth class sailboats in Sydney in the early 50s, totally different boat from what we have today. It was a scow hull. Of course, there were no outriggers. The equipment was very different canvas sails. I think the new boats are absolutely fantastic. It's wonderful to see a class develop that far. The Moth is a development class, so everyone's boat is a little bit different. You'll find most of the sailors' real jobs are in the engineering field. Boys and their toys. Once you basically water start the boat, you can start to fly around 8 knots of bow speed. The incredibly narrow rudder becomes incredibly important due to the amount of water that's flowing over the blade. It's more about finesse and less about brute strength. The higher the wind speeds, the crazier the wipeouts. Tell us about some memorable moments, guys. So we have three boats coming in on the run all at the same time. It was howling. Franco and Andrea, do we saw now? The boat, the vessel sailor. We both coming into the wing mark. Indians had a fishing net set up right across, I didn't notice. I was in a way bigger puff than I wanted to be in. Bad got this massive gust. Absolutely flying. I went to tack, except I oversteered. As we came around to, to jive, my boat started rising out of the water. Oh, look, could I turn here? At the last minute I tried to jive. Actually thought maybe. So I like pointed up and cut right behind him. A split second before the uh, boat catch pulled, I lost my balance and fell straight out of the boat. Which I thought was the right thing to do instead of riding the wreckage down. Pitched really hard, going fast. Catapulted myself right off, got tangled up, fishing net everywhere. Hit the offset mark and was against my face like this. Yeah, I had to crash, the other boat had to crash after us. I didn't know how I was going to get out of it. The problem with these boats, you don't even know what happened. You're going so fast. My boat just. Took off. I hit a wave, my life jacket rode up. I came back up out of the water and it was still going like downwind. Kind of embarrassing because it was right in front of everyone, but then I had to do like the swim for like 20 meters to catch up to the boat. By the time I got it, I was in dead last. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like in the water, boats crashed. And then when we were self righted the mast would come up again and big globs of mud would drop onto the deck. But it's absolutely so much fun. It's the best sailing you're probably going to find. Sera molto divertente. <laughs> good, very good, yatta! <laughs> it is easy to see what drew in the spectators on shore and numerous photo boats. A few moths had incidents and technical issues that landed them on shore for repairs. For those who made it out on the water though, moths can still be full of surprises. Just when you think you've set up for the perfect port approach on the starting line, the boats have two speeds, stopped and fast. So if you need to avoid someone, you have to crash. In terms of boat handling, the faster the boat, the more interesting the tacking situation becomes too. There's a big difference between a good tack and a bad tack. It all really comes down to who makes the least mistakes. 
Just go fast and find a spot on the ley line and you're all set. Most of the courses were windward lures with offsets and downward finishes. Jiving is much easier because you have a lot more time and speed going into the maneuver. It wasn't all boys out on the course. Meet Lindsay Bergen, the only lady of the fleet. I've sailed at the gorge actually quite a bit. This is the best place to come for guaranteed wins. It's really fun sailing against these guys. I hope to get more girls in the, in the fleet for sure. The top 10 were well defined early in the regatta, but the top one was just as clear. Bora Galari of Detroit, Michigan went into the second to last race knowing if he finished in the top three, he would win the regatta. He won the race. Moths are so tippy, most of the sailors just rest by flipping them over or sitting in the middle of the boat with a little bit of speed. Five minute sequences ready the fleet for the start and the boats go from zero to top speed in no time. Heading off to the Oregon side of the gorge, the leaders found their way to the top mark once again. But Gulari's superior downwind speed brought him another bullet. Nathan Outeridge of Australia finished in second with Arnon Serophagus right behind in third. After 15 races over five days, congratulations were in order. Gulari and Outeridge switched boats for a cruise to try out the other setup too. the boats got to show off their skills in front of the crowds on shore. Of course, some went for entertainment value too. Orgulari is the first American to win a world championship in the Moth since 1976. Winning seven of the 15 races with a commanding 12 point spread to second place proved Galari was the worthy champion. Competition at the gorge is great. It's a beautiful place to sail. Um, this is the best fleet I've ever sailed against. The competition was awesome. The gorge is wonderful, and I can't wait for next year in Dubai. Nathan Adelaide, Sydney, Australia. Okay, so I'm sailing at Blade Rider. It's a VRX. It's the latest and greatest model for Blade Rider. I had really good speed. Um, I'll definitely do the Worlds in 2011 in Belmont, Lake Macquarie, Australia, where I'm a local. To come second here, I'm, I'm really happy with that. Packing the boats up for transport includes taking off the wings and packing everything in a teensy shipping crate. What a compact operation. Congratulations to all the competitors and to Bora Gulari. For T2P TV, this is Ashley Love. You're watching T2P TV.